Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here. This is going to be week number three or four, I believe, of the ICBA. And uh, we have a very scary opponent. We we are facing D. Willy and the Brisbane Scythers, but um, he does have a really scary team. He does have the Coco uh, as well as a Hitmonlee to abuse Unburden, a Landorus Incarnate with Sheer Force, if I'm not mistaken, a Bronzong, which is incredibly scary. I've never, I feel like I never properly build for a Bronzong, but um, a Snorlax, which as well, I've always struggled with. I've always struggled against Snorlax teams, and behind my head, a Slowbro, which that core of Slowbro and Snorlax just makes his team so much more difficult to deal with than it would be otherwise. We do have a Pixie Plate, Tapu Lele, we have a pretty standard especially defensive Dardagon that's meant to kind of take a dazzling gleam and be able to hit back with an earthquake and I believe a physically defensive uh, Swampert just to be able to take on that Hitmonlee as kind of an emergency answer to it and uh, other pretty standard stuff I do have a I believe this is a sub nasty plot uh, Thunderous but this thing can go in it doesn't have the best time against certain members of his team but uh, I feel pretty good about it a pretty standard Scarfed Infernape and a pretty standard um, Mammoth Swine as well. So, I'm just going to get into the match. I could not even remember what I would lead off with. I believe I lead off with the Infernape. That would make the most sense to me. No, I end up leading off with the Tapu Lele. So, I do have a Shiny Lele. And he's going to come out with the Coco, if I'm not mistaken. So, we're going to know right off the bat. He's going to know that I'm not Scarfed. He's going to... We're going to get a feel for speed tiers with these, um, uh, terrain activations. And because I got my Sacred Terrain up, and it stays up... He's going to know that I am slower, so you can pretty much play off of that. He does go for the Volt Switch. I did kind of expect him to have U-Turn, but he does go for the Volt Switch. And I'm pretty free to fire off a uh, Psychic, I believe. Now, or a Moonblast. Yeah, Moonblast was reasonably free against his team. But uh, I see how little that does, and I'm a little bit concerned about it. We do got the Special Attack drop, which I don't think is ever going to matter. But, um, I'm doing some calcs, and Shadow Ball should do a decent amount of damage. And again, I struggle against this Bronzong. Lele is not ever going to be, like, the big endgame sweeper. So, I'm thinking, if I if I give up HP on my Lele for some, uh, damage onto this Bronzong, then I think I ultimately end up, um, in a favorable spot. But, this was actually a complete misclick, if I'm not mistaken. So, I meant to click a second Shadow Ball, but uh, I completely... Oh, no, I do click a second Shadow Ball. The misclick is coming in just a turn or two, but he he makes a perfectly reasonable switch. But now, I was going to go for the Psy Shock, and I believe this is actually the misclick. I was 100% about to go for a Psy Shock to try to hit the Snorlax, but I ended up clicking Moonblast, and Moonblast does almost half to a Slowbro, which is kind of bananas on its own, but... That's just how strong a Pixie Plate Lele can be. But now, I don't want to take any more damage. I, I feel like Lele still has a few more hits left in her to try to uh, take on the rest of his, his team. But he doubles out. He doubles out in, back into the Bronzong. And this is going to be an interesting position for me to be in. So, I kind of did expect him to Toxic. I felt like that would be pretty reasonable for him here. And I thought... With the worst case scenario, he goes for Gyro Ball, and it's kind of a dead turn, but I do get to keep a sub up, and I do get to Nasty Plot up, and I'm not going to mess around with this Bronze Song anymore, because uh, Gyro Ball should be doing a heck ton of damage to me, regardless of really what I do here, so I think I'm fine just to get to plus two, give up my sub, and uh, get a really fat Thunderbolt off in this moment here, and... Uh, it's going to be another interesting moment because this is going to allow in whatever he wants, right? Um, as much as I felt like uh, I needed to make that sequence of please, uh, it didn't really leave me in the best position here, but he does go into the Coco, and part of me thought that um, he wouldn't want to stay in here because I believe I was able to potentially take a Thunderbolt. So I felt like he would want to Volt Switch out, and that allowed me to get the Prankster uh, sub off which did allow me to take whatever hit, min minimizing the amount of damage that he would do to me with that Volt Switch, and uh, try to take on whatever he co goes into. He does go into the Hitmon Lean, and I believe he pops, yeah, just Electric Seed, and this is a double speed Hitmon Lean, and I definitely still think that my uh, Thunderous has use in the rest of this matchup, so I end up going into my Lele, primarily just as a sack, right? If something else happens, then great, but this is really meant to just be a sack here, and uh, maybe I get lucky if he goes for a fake out or something like that, 
Um, but there's no real reason for him to want to run um, a fake out here. He knocks off my pixie plate totally fine. But what this does is it is allows in my Swampert. And my Swampert is built to kind of take this thing off. I do get knocked off here. But from that damage, you can see that I'm incredibly physically defensive. Pretty much primarily to take this thing on. And he will be a plus one defense. So I don't do as much damage as I would like to. But I get over half, which is all that I need in this matchup. And uh, he can't really switch out and give up his Unburden. There's really no point in doing that. So now I'm free to take a close combat, get an Earthquake off, and kind of deal with this thing. Now, that does leave me in not the best position because Swampert was a little bit of a pocket um, check. Not even check. Um, slight annoyance to his Tapu Koko. But now uh, he's going to be able to... Volt switch around a lot more freely, get off Thunderbolt a lot more freely, because uh, I really don't want to give up too much HP on my Mammoth Swine. Now, here, I make a huge, huge mistake, because I really thought that he was going to try to um, Grass Knot here, or something else to that effect, but thinking back on it, all he had to do was um, was Dazzling Gleam, and I'm going to be able to go to my Inferno, get a U-Turn off for minimal chip damage, but... Uh, he's gonna know that I'm scarred, and it's gonna ultimately be fine. But uh, th there was no reason to make that play. I really should have just sacked off my Swampert, and even here, I U-turn out thinking that he would want to Thunderbolt me, but he goes for another Dazzling Gleam, and uh, he is able to take out my Mammoth Swine by going for the Dazzling Gleam into Grass Knot. Now, looking back on it, this is and this makes absolutely no sense to me. I should have just given up my Swampert. Swampert really had no real usefulness like I thought in my head that Swampert was more useful th than it would be But I just gave up my Mammoth Swine for absolutely nothing and and I get it like uh, part of it is me trying to play a little bit risky But it's going it's going into reckless territory I, I feel like I'm just playing recklessly at this point and I'm giving up mons that I really need for the end game But uh, this allows me to bring in my Dragon, which is kind of built for this situation I'm incredibly specially defensive and I can hit back on the earthquake, but he's just bulky enough to take this thing fine i was hoping that my dragon would be able to do more damage but it's just going to be how it goes but this does allow in my inferno to be able to uh pretty freely u-turn here uh we're gonna see if he does want to switch out and he does he does try to preserve it but um it never leaves me in a great position here um i think giving up my mammoth swan was just incredibly needless there was no real reason for me to do that and um I should have 100% just given up my Swampert. Uh, like I said, I was trying to take risks, and none of them, you know, kind of played out for me. Uh, I tried to play this matchup a little bit riskier because I did not think that I had the best matchup here. But uh, ultimately, just none of my calls were going my way. However, it does allow me to go into my Thunderous, pick off the uh, Landorus with an HP Ice, and... We're back in this situation, um, and I'm fine here because I do still have the Swampert to give up, which is ridiculous because if I had my Mammoth Swine, I can go into my Mammoth Swine and threaten something with an Ice Shard or something to that effect, but now he can just Grass Knot me. That's There was no absolutely no reason to keep my Swampert for this long, especially since I had the Mammoth Swine still in the back. It was a huge, huge mistake on my part, which I super regret, but uh, that's ultimately how the match played out. And now I'm in a two versus three situation, and ultimately I just had to call something correctly. Um, it was, I either had to click Flare Blitz or Close Combat, and I didn't know whether or not he was going to play for Differential. I didn't know if he was just going to give up the Coco to get a free switch in on something else, but I do go for the Flare Blitz, which I, if I'd gone for Close Combat, maybe things could have, maybe I could have gotten one final KO, but ultimately it didn't work out for me. I was too afraid of the Slowbro coming in. But this match has well been over for, for a while now. This match probably has been over since the Mammoth Swine went down. Um, when, like I said, all I really had to do was give up my Swampert um, the way that I should have. But I, uh, I I got too in my head in that moment. And I thought that uh, I could make some crazy out, out prediction to keep my Swampert for, for the later game. Because if I was able to keep... Um, all the mons that I needed as well as Swampert in the back for a sack that would ultimately put me in the best position possible But it I really just ended up shooting myself in the foot in this situation so ultimately this, this is gonna be the last few turns his um, The last three of his mons are gonna be in more than a good enough position to be able to take out my Infernape 
Uh, so yeah, ultimately I did not play this matchup well. Um, I made some huge, huge mistakes that I should have never made. But uh, great game to D. Willie. He absolutely played this really well. I think I had what I needed. I just completely misplayed my resources, and uh, this is what happened. So this is going to be a super re regrettable way to lose a match. But uh, ultimately, I think this is not the worst thing to come back from. Um, it does just end up being a 3-0 loss. It's going to be our first loss of the season. I believe that will put us down to 3-1. and one. Um, But it won't be the worst thing in the world at all to try to come back from. And uh, we'll take it from there. I still do like a whole bunch of the pieces that I have here together. And I think ultimately I had the pieces that I needed. I just had to have played them better. In any case, that's going to be week four. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the ICBA, with more week, uh, with uh, a potential couple more rounds of the APA and or MPL playoffs, depending on uh, how things pan out, and uh, a league war that's coming up soon, and hopefully a new season of the PGBL coming up really, really soon. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be once again.